Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Beeline to Victory podcast. It's episode 26, and we'll get right into it. So we'll recap the game against Montana, the win against Montana, and we will preview the game against number six, Houston, and we'll go over some other first-round storylines. So last night, Michigan defeated Montana 61-47 to on a great night from Charles Matthews, a not-so-great night from Moro Wagner. Rock Bond played all right. It was really – it was the defense. They played very good defense up until uh, – from five minutes into the game to the end of the game. The first five minutes were awful. They were down 10 nothing. I was starting to panic a little bit. But they played great defense from there, and they really relied on that because they didn't – they were rusty. They hadn't played in 11 days, and it showed uh, with their shooting. It wasn't good. Um, it's a good thing they played – it's a good thing they weren't playing a really elite team or else they would not have won that game. So they were able to get the rust off, and hopefully they can shake that off going into the next round. Uh, Montana, they got lucky here. Michigan did get lucky because Montana didn't shoot well at all either. They went on a 10-minute span without a point. So this was, a, this was one we really, really needed to grind out, and we did. And I think it's a credit first to John Beeline, who in the first half, Xavier Simpson played five minutes. He played those first five minutes. They were down 10 nothing. Jerron Simmons played basically the rest of the half, and they ended up being up by three at halftime and then winning the game by 14 points. Simpson played much better in the second half. He got that motivation. Matthews played very well. Uh, Rockman was in early foul trouble, but he got back in the game. He played fine. But And the one thing that really stood out to me was they had about five fast breaks, and every single time they threw the ball away. That cannot happen. That re- that cannot happen against Houston. They they cannot do that. I'm sure Coach Beeline will fix that, and they'll be fine going in the next round against Houston, who we will talk about right now. So Michigan will play number six Houston tomorrow at 940 on TBS in Wichita. Uh, just a little scouting report here. Houston lost to Cincinnati in the American final, and they have they are twenty seven and seven. Um, really, all you need to know is Rob Gray averaged nineteen points a game, and he's been on fire lately. He I watched them against Wichita State. He willed them to the victory against Wichita State, almost willed them to the victory against Cincinnati, and last night against San Diego State, absolutely put the team on his back and won them that game. This is a guy they have to be wary of, and this is a game they have to be wary of. This, this is I I think it's a good matchup because Simpson and Rockman are two of the best defenders in the country when it comes guard wise. So I think it's a good matchup for them. That's go, that's what's going to come down to. Can they hold Rob Gray under twenty five points? If they do that, they win the game. Under twenty five points, they win the game. It doesn't matter what the others do. If they hold Rob Gray under twenty five points, they will win this game. And that's my three keys. That's it. Rob Gray, key number one, key number two, key number three. This Houston team, though, is motivated, and this if Gray gets hot, watch out. It could be over from there because he has he's one of these guys that has the ability to put this team on his back, and this is why I am very wary of this Houston team. And I'm not – I mean, I think they're going to win this game, but I am not confident, nearly as confident as I was going into Montana. I'm not very – I'm not so confident they're going to win this game. This is going to be a tough one. I'm not going to lie. This is going to be a really, really tough game. This team, this team's going to grind you. But as long as Rob Gray is held in check, they will not. Uh, in my opinion, Michigan should be able to win this one. As long as Rob Gray is held in check, that's got to be main priority uh, for Coach Beeline and crew to shut down Rob Gray. It's going to come down to Simpson and Rockmon. Uh, whether it's whether it's a mix or one of them, whoever's hot at the time, whoever wants to pick him up, whoever's motivated enough to pick him up. I mean, that's that's really what it's going to come down to. Rob Gray, you can, you can hear you heard here first. If he is held under twenty five points, Michigan will win the game. If it goes over twenty five points, Houston will win the game. That's what it comes down to, right there. So my pick, uh, close one, I got Michigan over Houston. I think they're going to hold them just under 25, and they'll squeak one out 
and move on to the Sweet 16. Um, all right, so we'll move on here. Uh, some other storylines. Really, um, I'll start with this. The biggest, the biggest upset in NCAA tournament history. Maryland, Baltimore County, number 16 seed, upsets the number one overall seed, Virginia. The first time in NCAA tournament history that a 16 seed has defeated a one seed. And this is a team, Virginia, this is a team that has not proven themselves in the tournament. I picked them to lose to Creighton in the second round. Obviously, that didn't work out. Creighton lost, and Virginia lost in the first round. But I knew that they were not going to get to the second weekend. They... In order for me to pick them, they got to prove something to me in the tournament. Virginia has got to prove something to me in the tournament, uh, and they uh, and they didn't prove anything here. This is what this is what happens to me. Um, when you have a team that is this good defensively, but at times, at times can stall offensively. This is what happened. And Virginia was stalling the entire game. And give UMBC credit; they made a lot of big shots. I was watching this game, and I'm thinking. Wow. I, I was stunned. I was stunned watching the game. Unbelievable. Uh, Loyola Chicago beat Miami. I did pick that one. Um, this another stunner. My This is my first loss last night. Buffalo defeated Arizona, who a lot of people have winning it all or going to the Final Four. I do have them losing the second round in my bracket, but still, Arizona, you got to be a, the Pac-12 has to be embarrassed. The Pac-12 did not get a win in the tournament. And, uh, that that's that I don't know how that happens. That's tough for them. Uh, also, Marshall defeated Wichita State earlier today for one of the bigger upsets as well. Uh, yeah, Big Ten wise, Michigan State took care of business against Bucknell. It was a pretty good game. Same thing with Ohio State. Good game against San. Uh, good game against South Dakota State, but they took care of business. Uh, Purdue beat Cal State Fullerton pretty bad earlier. But the asterisk is there because Isaac Haas, unfortunately, suffered a tournament-ending injury and was going to be out for the rest of the tournament. Purdue, I mean, their their bracket is not exactly... I mean, I don't, I don't know if they're going to have too much trouble in this next round. They still have Carson Edwards, who I think can lead a team deep into a tournament. But losing Isaac Haas, that big presence underneath, that that's going to be really tough for them to overcome. And I think it really deters their Final Four hopes as a whole. I don't know that they can get by that. They will play Butler, and that, that's a good chance for Butler to go ahead and get back to the Sweet 16. Um, oh, and just a final, I just got... Uh, Syracuse has just defeated TCU. That is not that great of an upset. But um, it is an upset. So TCU is out. Syracuse will play Michigan State. Ohio State will take on Gonzaga. And Purdue, as just said, will play Butler. Okay. So that is going to do it. Uh, thank you for watching, and we will see you next week.